Hey everyone, at GamerGuy1991 here, bringing you a special video report that is all about video game remasters and preserving gaming history. Now, diving into this subject, we're going to be talking about the importance of video game remasters. Why they are important is the fact that not only is it fun to go back and play some of our favorite games, I myself recently rebought an original Xbox just to go play a really special game to me from Russia with love on it. So, if we have that one reason, which is already a pretty good reason to bring these games out, what's another one? Well, here's one that's really important. It shows us what was so great about game design in those days. And when a lot of people talk about it, or retro gaming, you know, they're about in the good old days. They seem to refer to the present as if it's now a bad time to be a gamer, and it's certainly not. There are a lot of great, new, original, and super creative games coming up by really passionate developers. But there are also a lot of other developers that have been constricted by the funding that they so desperately need to make these games because the people don't want to give money to something that they do not know will be a guaranteed hit and will actually make their money back. That is a shame because when you go back and you experience some of these older games, it was when they pushed those original ideas, the envelope, when they were really trying something different that you had so many of these wonderful games come out. When you push those original creative ideas forward and you try to come up with new gameplay styles, mechanics, and just a game that doesn't look or play like anything else on the market, you come up with really special games. I mean, that's why we have a lot of the franchises that are so popular to this day. It stemmed from a really different, really original gaming idea because back in the day, the way they could sell these games wasn't, hey, you like Call of Duty? We do it even better. It was, hey, we've got a game that you've never experienced before. This is unlike anything you have ever played. And that got a lot of gamers interested in a lot of these different games because when they'd sit down and play it, they'd have to go, hmm, well, let me learn the mechanics, let me get my idea around this. They would typically be packaged around themes or ideas that we'd be familiar with or appreciate, but the actual gameplay was always really different. You know, you did have your copycat games back in the day and games that followed gaming tropes and trends really heavily. But at the end of the day, you had a lot of these really original ideas and games too. Because studios back in the day knew that you weren't going to buy two of the same game. Oh wait, that brings me to a another point about video game remasters. It seems that people have an issue or take issue with the fact that when it comes to video game remasters, you're essentially buying the same game a second time. Well, as an avid movie collector, I raise my hand going, but we do that all the time with DVD, okay? Blu-ray, and so yeah. on. But you see, when we transitioned right from VHS to DVD, there were a few holdouts. There still are, rarely. But, you know, they're there. Who, for some reason, wanted to stay with their old format. They didn't want to buy something again. They wanted to keep their collection. I do understand that part of the mentality, but once I got past the whole keeping my collection bit of it, I realized, hey, this new format makes my films look and sound even better. I have all these new different options available to me. And then when it came to Blu-ray, you had even better durability, better picture quality, and all this extra stuff that suddenly made upgrading worthwhile. Video games are no different. There are tons of great reasons to buy these remasters, whether it be better visuals, trophy support if you like that kind of thing, or just the fact that they've actually worked some of the kinks out of some of these games. That's a really, really good reason to jump into some of these remasters, especially if you already enjoyed the game or it was a game that you wanted to play, but you never got around to it. Well, that does also bring up the big negative when it comes to these remasters, and not the one that most people think of, and it's the fact that they can actually be a little costly, and they can actually take time and even development to make them run on the new consoles. That puts off a lot of studios from these cash cows that are remasters, because if you take some of these really popular games, like I'm sure before Spider-Man PS4 came out, had they remastered and re-released Spider-Man 2, 
that game would have sold like hotcakes, especially in the lead up to Spider-Man PS4. So there are a lot of untapped gold mines that these studios have that they're just not going into, and that's a shame. But I can totally understand why they don't want to necessarily sink the funds into essentially developing an old game. So here is an idea, and it's one that's kind of being tested right now. They are releasing either consoles that can play older games, or they're re-releasing older consoles when it comes to Nintendo that's re-released their Super Nintendo system. They've actually done one that I believe also plays original Nintendo games. So when it comes to that kind of idea, what about just remanufacturing PlayStation 2s, Xbox, Dreamcast, you know, whatever the case may be for the system part of it? Why not remanufacture those? So, for those gamers who already have a huge collection of retro games, or maybe gamers who want to get into it, they can go and buy those games that are out of print for various reasons. Like the games that I purchased from Russia with Love for my original Xbox, it is out of print and will probably remain that way till the end of time due to licensing issues. However, there are tons of readily available copies in circulation. There are tons of readily available copies for all sorts of retro games that you can pick up, even new sealed copies for cheaper than a new current generation game even. So with all that knowledge, these game studios are not realizing that re-releasing these systems for an affordable price is actually a gold mine for them because the technology is so much cheaper today, it would be way more cost effective to manufacture these old consoles now. I spent $60 on an original Xbox because I so desperately wanted to play from Russia with love. They could have sold me a brand new Xbox for like 100 bucks, 120 bucks, and I guarantee you they would have at least made $60 profit on that, if not more. That may not sound like a lot, but when you look at video games, they're $60. They're not making that much profit on them when you look at $100, $200 million developed games. So, in the grand scheme of things, they actually have a real gold mine when it comes to the licensing rights and the technology to remanufacture these old consoles, especially the original Xbox, which is damn near impossible to emulate on PC. I mean, you can emulate it on the 360 because Microsoft has done that. And there are some people that have claimed they've got an emulation working on computers, but I've yet to see one that's reliable and that actually works. So, with things of that nature being in mind, it makes perfect sense to remanufacture these old consoles. But, that may be a pipe dream for a lot of gamers like me. So with that in mind, it makes perfect sense to release remasters of games. I think they are a brilliant idea and I definitely think it's one that we as gamers should be embracing because gaming is not a disposable medium. These are great sources of art and they should be remembered and enjoyed over and over again, not just once and then thrown away. I mean, if that was the case, why is everybody not just using Gamefly, renting games, cuts. finishing them, and then He's sending them out for a new one? I, that's the mentality like most gamers have reason. when they go to GameStop, Long they do the trade-ins and stuff. I'm so glad in, in some ways that we're going to digital because it will stop that mentality. And it's one that I was guilty of. I sold all my old games. I traded in my old systems and now I'm in the process of rebuying my collection. But then when I look at my PS4 and I realize I have a lot of these games digitally, suddenly I'm sitting back and playing games that I haven't played in over a year that weren't even really that special to me and I'm having a blast with them again. That says something to me that if I'm doing that with games that are on the same generation that I've just forgot about, what about all these old game experiences that people have never had? I'm sure people out there who are James Bond fans like myself would be interested in the fact that there is a game where you can play Sean Connery's James Bond with Sean Connery as the voice actor playing through one of the greatest Bond adventures of all time from Russia with Love. That is something that will be so fucking awesome to so many people. So if there are games like that, there are these hidden gems that people didn't discover or didn't play through. What is stopping game studios 
from these gold mines. They've already spent the money developing them. Even if it costs a little money for the remasters, even if it costs a little money to remanufacture a console, they have to understand there is only profit to be made at this point. The hard work has been done. This is something that movie studios understood a long time ago. People like rewatching movies. People like experiencing things that they haven't seen before because they missed it the first go around. So they're able to keep recouping money to pay the actors, the directors, so people actually keep getting money. Games should be done the same way, so game designers can get royalties. That's my one reason for hating buying pre games. I'm like, oh, I love this game. I want to support the developer. That's actually why we've seen so many developers shudder because of the pre-owned game market. That's why EA did the horrible thing back in the day with selling the online game passes. So when you bought a pre-owned game like Call of Duty, or in this case Battlefield, because this is EA we're talking about, my stupidness aside, you had to buy, pay $20, $10 to play the online portion of the game. Instead of embracing stupid trends like that, we need to embrace the trends of actually selling games that we don't sell anymore. You even see that on current gen consoles, by the way. I mean, when we have digital game marketplaces, you don't lose so many games. But walk into a Walmart, a GameStop, unless you find them used, you're not finding a lot of these games that came out around the time when the console first started out. You just don't walk into stores these days and find a wide selection of the actual games for the console. Now, I understand there are certain ones that have licensing issues preventing that, and that's why you don't see them on the digital marketplace. But with all that aside, why are games treated like something that comes out, three, six months pass, everybody's basically either decided they're going to play it or not play it, so it's shit, and forget about it. That is a horrible, horrible, horrible thing to all of these hundreds of people who put their blood, sweat, and tears into these great gaming experiences. And I utterly hate that about the gaming industry. It just, it just sucks a lot of the enjoyment out of it for me when I realize, hey, I'm playing this great game right now, but in two or three years, people will never be able to experience it again. That sucks. So guys, either make the systems available again or start remastering every game. And for every gamer out there who is clamoring, I don't want any more fucking remasters, please. For the love of God, think about what you're actually saying. You're saying you want games to be disposable. You're saying, forget these games, they're no longer important because a couple of years have passed. No! Even for games that are now 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old. I mean, we're approaching 20 years old for a game like Armed and Dangerous, an original Xbox launch title. That game is still fun and funny as hell. I love that game. And I bet money there are so many people watching this video who are like, what is Armed and Dangerous? What are you talking about? Well, I would show you if I had a way to accurately capture Xbox game footage without just using my cell phone camera. But look up Armed and Dangerous gameplay footage and just watch somebody playing that game. It's awesome. But see, that's the thing. For a lot of people today who are hearing about maybe a game like From Russia with Love, Armed and Dangerous, the only way for you to experience this is to watch somebody else play it. That sucks. These aren't games... Games aren't meant to be watched. Games are meant to be played. That brings up a whole other issue, and yeah, you're kind of doing that while you're watching my videos. It is a paradox. I get it. So that is where we will end this report on video game remasters and preserving gaming history and why it is so fucking important to me because, hey, games are awesome. They bring joy. Art, games, they all should be treated with far more reverence. They are more important than we realize. Thanks everyone for watching and staying with my insane rambling. Peace out, guys. But there's a tattoo parlor in Yokosuka too. A friend told me about it. Where's the tattoo parlor? I don't know.